Here is exactly how the VA is going to rate your elbows and your forearms. And yes, it is possible to receive up to four different ratings. We are also going to cover secondary conditions, which in my opinion is the road to 100% for those that don't have it. And then I'm going to pull up the DBQ. So make sure you stay to see what your CNP examiner is going to see. Most veterans will be rated under range of motion. So we will look at that first. Here is range of motion. Before you look at the percentages, keep in mind that there is a dominant and non-dominant rating scale. So I'm right-handed. And if I submitted a claim for my right elbow, I would fall into the dominant rating. If I filed a claim for my left elbow, I would fall into the non-dominant rating. The range of motion on your elbows can be rated anywhere from 0 to 50%. Now, I do want you to know the overwhelming majority of ratings I see for the elbow and the forearm are 0 or 10%. I don't want you to think that you're going to get a 50% for your elbow right off the bat. Now, a 50% rating is totally possible. And as you can see, it depends on your limited extension and flexion of your elbow. There is a special rating where if the veteran can only straighten their arm to about 45 degrees and not or, but and bend their arm to 100 degrees, then they will receive a 20% rating that is dominant or non-dominant. And that is where most of your 20% elbow ratings will stem from versus the range of motion by itself. Now, the forearm is the same deal, except of instead of flexion and extension, we're looking at pronation and supination. And I hope I said that right. Forearms can be rated anywhere from 10 to 30%. Angulosis for the elbow and forearm, which is the loss of use, is very similar to range of motion, but has a higher rating as symptoms are more severe. Elbows are from 40 to 60%, and the forearm is from 20 to 40%. Just like other joints, an elbow replacement can be given a temporary 100% rating, and then the VA would rate residual symptoms post-surgery with a minimum rating of 30% for dominant and 20% for non-dominant. So if you've had surgery on your service-connected elbow, it will automatically be 30 or 20%, which is a huge win. Instability is a bit weird as this can also be too much motion. So for those really weird instances of joints looking like alien joints, a flail joint can be rated at 60 or 50%. And this sucks. <clears throat> it sucks to have. It's a good rating to have. The VA describes instability, and I'm going to read this off so everyone is on the same page. Veterans radius or on the bone must have broken at some point and did not heal, the resulting in extra movement in the forearm, akin to a flail joint, but being located within the veteran's forearm. Instability in the elbow can be rated at 50 or 40%. The bones in the elbow and forearm are broken down by the radius bone and the ulna bone, and each bone can receive a rating anywhere from 10 to 40%, and the criteria are identical. Now, you will notice that this is very similar to the instability that we just discussed, so here's the deal. The VA will only reward one rating for your elbows and forearms, and in the instance where two ratings can be applied, it will be a rating for pronation and supination, so your forearms, and extension and flexion in your elbow. That is per elbow and forearm, so potentially there are four different ratings that can be awarded. It is important to note that if you fall into the instability or bone categories, that rating will probably be higher than your range of motion ratings. If, so if you have the four different ratings and instability or the bone stuff, you're probably going to have one rating for instabilities and bones versus range of motion. The VA will take the higher. Now, looking at common secondaries, the most common and first secondary that comes to mind is nerve damage. Your cubital nerve and carpal tunnel nerves run through your forearm and elbow, and you can imagine any sort of strain, especially in cases of broken bones and surgeries, that there could be some nerve damage. To be real, these are always hard to connect, and I know YouTube would tell you otherwise, but I'm going to give you the truth, the raw truth. 
musculoskeletal conditions to other musculoskeletal conditions is a difficult claim. In this case, shoulder strain caused by your elbow and forearms um, would be a hard claim. It's possible. It's totally certainly possible, especially in severe cases, but you will absolutely need a stellar nexus and a rock star CMP exam. So it's really not a slam dunk type of claim. For those that have severe elbow and forearm conditions, I would also look at mental health as a secondary. Your arms are crucial, like every other part of your body, but we use our arms for everything. We use them even when we walk with our feet. That could definitely lead to some mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, feeling unwanted, or feeling like you've been a burden to your family, and a host of other conditions and symptoms. If that is you, you might want to check that out. Mental health can be rated anywhere from 0 to 100% depending on severity. And remember, healthcare is extremely important. Now let's go ahead and check out the DBQ for shoulders. Or I'm sorry, elbows and forearm conditions. DBQ stands for Disability Benefits Questionnaire. Um, my favorite part of every DBQ is actually this very, very first portion right here, mainly the evidence review. It talks about what evidence was reviewed. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you get a private DBQ and for some reason this box was checked, this DBQ means diddly squat. I don't care how much you pay for it. I don't care who it came from. But a solid examiner is at a minimum going to review your records. Without evidence, there is no nexus. Keep that in mind. Now, records reviewed, okay, um, it could be VA, you know, VA Medical Center, Washington, D.C., um, healthcare records. That would be an example, right? C file could be an example. Um, service treatment record, I'll just put SCRs, whatever that looks like. This portion here for every DBQ is critical because have the if there is competing evidence, let's say you have your C... <clears throat> Let's say you, your examiner only looks at your service treatment records for whatever reason. Well, in your VAMC records, okay, um, if there's competing evidence going against whatever claim is in your SDRs, that's going to be used against you. And so your examiner wants to look at all of the evidence. And I'll, I'll kind of get off my evidence soapbox so we can look at elbows and forearms. Um, tons and tons of diagnosis within elbows and forearms. And I mean tons, okay? And there's even a portion down here for other diagnosis if they don't fall into those categories. Um, and there's ICD codes, International Classification of Diseases. That's an actual diagnosis um, in the international community, obviously. And then the date of diagnosis, and then it has right, left, or both. We did skip something, which was dominant hand. And from the get-go, it will say if you're right, if you're left or ambidextrous, okay? Now scrolling down after diagnosis, medical history. So again, looking at your STRs and evidence, you know, evidence indicates X, Y, Z for your elbows and shoulders, whatever, or elbows and forearms, whatever that looks like for you, that's where that will go. Um, it can also be VA med med medical records and you're looking for continuity. Continuity is key. Did I spell that right? No, I didn't. Spell check's going to help me out, okay? Um, then it looks like, does the veteran report flare-ups? And so these are questions the CMP examiner is going to ask you. They're going to say, hey, veteran, so-and-so, does your elbow or forearm pain ever flare up? That's it, yes or no. And then they describe that. And so you absolutely want to check this out. More medical history. Let's go down to range of motion for a functional limitation, okay? Functional limitation. So... And you, you can read this, but I'll, I'll kind of put my Barney style spin on it. If you can't carry the groceries from Costco to your car, from your car to your home, that's functional loss. Okay, functional li li limitation. You can't pick up your child because of your elbows and forearm and you got four kids like I do. That would be functional limitation. So describe that to your examiner. The range of motion stuff is going to come. All right. They are going to measure your range of motion. Here it is. Flexion extension. And then in your forearms, pronation and supination. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I'm going to go with it. More range of motion, tons and tons of range of motion for repetitive use testing with at least three repetitions. Okay, that's in the DBQ, plain language. Um, more range of motion. Let's skip down to other parts. 
muscle atrophy so in re really severe cases like surgery or severe accidents that's where you'll see that um ankylosis that definitely sucks um if this is you this section pertains to the loss of use of your elbows and forearms um other impairments okay so it kind of gets at it kind of gets at um secondaries or deformities okay in the arm so shoulders and arms can be rated on, on deformity that could also be a rating um and so it's it's let's just say secondaries for now but the concept remains okay there are other conditions that can stem from your elbows and your forearms surgical procedures absolutely and then something to note um, the last section here, well, down to the last, is going to be scarring. There's a there's a lot, 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 lot of other ones, but scar. So if you have a gnarly scar on your elbow or forearm, I have a scar from my hand here all the way down to uh, kind of like my mid arm, right below my wrist. Um, scars can be rated as well. DBQ for elbows and forearms. I hope this helped you.